Okay, in this video, we're going to continue with module 34. So this is solving a polynomial inequality problem type 4. The only difference here between problem type 1 and 2 is that it's not in its factored form. So we do the same thing as we did with the quadratics, and we put it into that factored form. And so then now that it's in its factored form, we set each factor equal to zero, and we get these three values. Then we can set up our number line. Negative four would be here, zero in the middle, and three on the side. Plug in our test values. And then let's see what we get. So plug them into, remember, plug them into your factored version. So we'd have a negative times a negative times a negative, which ends up being negative. Here we'd have a negative times a positive times a negative, which ends up positive. Here we'd end up with a positive 1, <laughs> then positive 5, and a negative 2. When we multiply that, we end up negative, and I plug in 5. Positive 5 on the outside, positive 9 on the inside there, and a positive 2 on the inside there. So when I multiply these signs together, I get a positive. So which regions do we take as part of our answers? This says less than 0, which means I should be only concerned with the negatives. So this section here is part of my answer, and this section here is part of my answer. And there is no equal bar. So these should have open dots. And so now when I do my interval, there is a break in the graph. So I will have two regions as part of my answer. I'm starting from left to right. I will have negative infinity to negative four. Open dot means parentheses, union. From zero to three, open dots mean parentheses. And this is the answer in interval notation. Now we move on to the last two concepts in this module, which have to do with rational inequalities. Okay. Now these, you do the same as you do um, the polynomials. The only thing different is that you have two things to consider. One is that you have to consider your domain. And you have to remember for the domain of a fraction, the denominator cannot equal zero. So that means x minus three cannot equal zero, which means x cannot equal three. And what that means is on, as far as the number line is concerned, wherever three is, you're gonna have a hole there because x cannot equal three, okay? Now, if we take this part out, right, and we just look at what we have in the numerator, we can set that numerator. It doesn't need to be factored, so we can just set it the way it is equal to zero. And we get x equals to negative five. So the other number of interest here is going to be that negative five. Now, for the negative five, though, the inequality does have a bar. So this negative five should have a solid dot. However, the three, even though there's a bar here, it says it could equal zero, your denominator can never equal zero. So that one should not have a solid dot. Okay, so always consider your domain first, fill in all those holes, and then go back and consider your numerator. Okay, now that we have these spots here, it's created three regions all on its own. So we've got a test of these three regions. So I'm gonna try negative six in there between a negative and a positive. I like to try zero and then four. Now you do have to plug it into this part here, okay? So I'm basically going to be dividing now instead of multiplying my signs. So when I plug in negative six in the top, I'm gonna to get a negative. When I plug in a negative six at the bottom, I'm gonna get a negative. What is a negative divided by a negative? It's positive. If I plug in zero, I'll get a positive in the top, 
I'll get a negative in the bottom. A positive divided by a negative is negative. If I plug in 4, I'll get a positive in the top. I'll get a positive on the bottom, which is ultimately a positive. And which regions are we supposed to take as part of our answers? Since it's supposed to be greater than or equal to 0, it means I'm taking the positives. So this region is positive and this region is positive. And I do have a gap between the two regions, so my interval will have two um, sections in it. So put a union from the left to the right. So from negative infinity to negative 5, solid means bracket. And then from 3 to positive infinity, open means parentheses. And infinity always gets parentheses. Whether it's positive infinity or negative infinity, it should always have a parentheses. And that's the answer there. So let's try one more. It says problem type 2. Okay. So this one's different in that it doesn't have the zero already set up for me. And so remember when we were adding and subtracting fractions, that's where this is going to come into play big time. So in order for me to move this whole fraction over, I'm actually going to have to subtract it. And when I subtract it, I end up with this statement here. So I just subtracted this whole fraction over here and subtracted the whole fraction over there. Now in order for me to do this problem the way we did the previous one, this has to be one giant fraction. And currently it is not one giant fraction. So we have to make it so. In order to do that, we need a common denominator. So to get the common denominator, we're going to take this here and multiply it by this denominator, x plus 5 and x plus 5. And we're going to take this fraction and multiply it by the other denominator, x minus 1 and x minus 1. So when we're finished, we end up with x plus 5, x plus 3 over x plus 5, x minus 1, subtracted these two factors over the same denominator. So then I can write them, since they have the same denominator, I can write them just over that one denominator. I have a giant fraction. The numerator, though, I am going to have to simplify because I do want them in their factored form. So I have to distribute this. So I get that for the first product minus, and then I have to distribute this. And then remember, this subtraction is for that entire numerator. So I will have to distribute that minus. And so then here, the x squared minus x squared will cancel. 8x plus x is 9x plus 3 is 12x. 15 minus 3 is negative or positive 12. And then at the bottom, you have this. And now I'm one step away. I just have to factor that. I can factor out a 12. And now it's set up the way the previous problem was set up. So we do have to consider our domain first. And we know that our denominator cannot equal zero, which means I'm going to come all the way to the top because I'm running out of room here. I cannot have x plus 5 cannot equal zero and x minus 1 cannot equal zero which means x cannot equal negative 5 and x cannot equal positive 1. Then we're going to find our points of interest by taking the numerator equal to 0. So 12x plus 1 equal to 0. If you divide by 12, you just get x plus 1 equal to 0, and then you get x equal to negative 1. Now, let's plot this on a number line. 
So to the far left, we have negative 5. And to the middle, we're going to have negative 1. And then to the right, we're going to have positive 1. Now, x cannot equal negative 5, which means there's going to be a hole there. x cannot equal positive 1, which means there will be a hole there for the domain. For the uh, point of interest, we have to look at the inequality. The inequality says less than or equal to. So this one should have a solid dot. And since we're looking for less than, we're looking for the negative regions, okay? And when we plug in our test points, we're going to plug them into this factored version down here. So test point in this region is negative 6. Test point in this region is maybe negative 3. Test point between a negative and a positive is 0. And a test point over here may be positive 2. So let's see what signs we get. Um, the 12 is positive, so it's really not going to affect anything. Um, if you want, you can just put positive for the 12. When I plug in negative 6 here, though, I'm going to end up with a negative. At the bottom, I'm going to end up with negative for that factor and a negative for this factor. In the end, I'm going to end up with a negative over a positive, which is negative. For the negative 3, again, 12 is positive always. Plug in a negative 3 here, you end up negative. Plug in a negative 3 here, you end up positive. Plug in a ne negative there, you end up with a negative. So we end up with a negative over a negative, which is ultimately positive. Now we plug in 0. So 12 is always positive here. That will give me a positive 1, a positive 5, and a negative 1. So you end up with positive over negative, which is negative. Plugging in 2. 12 is still positive. That will be a positive 3. That will be a positive 7 and a positive 1. So you end up with positive over positive, which is ultimately positive. And again, going back to the inequality, less than zero means I should only be looking for the negative regions, which is this region here and this region in here. So I do have a gap in between those two regions, so I am going to have a union in my intervals. So going from left to right, I have negative infinity to negative 5, and over here, negative 1 to 1. This is infinity, so it's a parenthesis. That's an open dot, parenthesis, solid dot, bracket, open, paren open dot, parenthesis. And this is the final answer.